One of the reasons Frontier Pilot Simulator is more fun than a lot of other flight games is due to the difficulty. Challenging weather, terrain and flight mechanics mean that even short trips can become tense and exciting. With that in mind, I'll share 10 tips that should help make things a bit more approachable to get you started in this unique entry in the simulation game genre. First you'll need to understand the difference between VTOL and CTOL. So VTOL is short for vertical takeoff and landing and CTOL is short for conventional takeoff and landing and basically what that means is VTOL is when you're taking off in the same way that a helicopter would and CTOL is the conventional way that a plane would usually take off. So CTOL requires an upgrade on the smallest chip and you won't be able to do long distance flights without it. VTOL takes a lot more fuel and it's especially inefficient on larger ships. Only use it for takeoff, landing and short distance flights. This will get a little bit easier later on if you can get some efficiency upgrades, but when you start out you'll notice that this does use a lot of fuel. The correct way to switch from VTOL to CTOL is to get sufficient height, lean the ship forward with the wings level and then switch. Note that it's very easy to destabilize the ship while switching, and when you're switching back, ensure that you're not diving too fast as it's much harder to stop the downwards or falling momentum in VTOL mode. Most crashes occur during landing and especially when switching into VTOL mode. You can dramatically extend the range of a flight by throttling down and flying at higher altitudes. There's no point in maxing out the engines on long distance travel because the higher air resistance means that you'll use a lot more fuel for very little speed gain. Likewise, higher altitudes mean less air resistance. You can check the head-up display to see how much distance you can cover and how long you can remain in the air given the current speed, altitude, weight and other factors that are impacting your distance. Note that flying in AR mode dramatically increases your fuel consumption. There are upgrades to reduce the impact of AR on fuel use and that can make a huge difference, but in any event it's best not to use AR when you don't need it, especially on flights where you're getting close to the margins on range. Bigger ships aren't always better. Keep in mind that the biggest ship in the game takes a huge amount of fuel to run, in addition to being the largest and hardest to maneuver. It only makes sense to use it for heavy cargo runs. If you're continuously using it for transporting passengers or light cargo runs, you're probably leaving a lot of profit on the table. Heavy ships not only take more fuel in CTOL, but it can literally burn tons of fuel if you spend too much time in VTOL during takeoff and landing, leading to higher costs or potentially crashes if you run out of fuel. Of course, you can also upgrade the heavier ships, but some of these upgrades are incredibly expensive early on in the game. This is really something that you should only start looking into later on in the game, as I find that you don't really need the heavy ship to make a lot of profits in Frontier Pilot Simulator. Weight plays a huge role in the game. I once upgraded my ship with larger fuel tanks, only to realize that the huge fuel load along with the cargo I was carrying meant that the ship could barely support its own weight in VTOL mode. If you're carrying heavy loads, you want to be extra careful about how and where you switch back into VTOL mode. Level out your ship first and don't carry too much downward momentum when switching over as we discussed in the earlier tips. The medium sized ship is, in my opinion, the best all round ship in the game. It can easily do long distance flights and it has enough cargo space to do most cargo runs. It's also very versatile and with upgrades you can dramatically extend the range provided that you fit bigger engines to compensate for the increased fuel load. Almost every upgrade has pros and cons. Note that upgrades can increase the weight of your ship so it's best to experiment with different ships and setups until you find a setup that suits your needs. Important factors include the weight and fragility of the cargo you typically transport and where you're likely to land. All things considered, the distances you'll be covering are probably the most important factor for most players. For example, you can significantly extend the range of the medium-sized ship by buying batteries that extend the fuel capacity from 5,000 kg to 13,000 kg. The problem is that the addition of 8 tons is a huge amount of weight to add, more than a lot of the heavier cargo hauls. This means that you'll have to buy extremely expensive engines as well to deal with the extra weight, which will lead to a less efficient craft that's going to be very difficult to maneuver under full fuel load. Instead, you can simply upgrade to more efficient engines, which will reduce the consumption by 50%. This will also double your range, but with a significantly lighter ship, not to mention that you'll spend half as much on fuel. You can further optimize this setup by buying low drag wings, which will reduce the drag by 20%, further saving fuel, increasing range, and increasing your travel speed. At the time of making this video, both of these upgrades can be found at Concord. 
If you crash, you won't lose your ship, but you'll pay a small insurance fee for your exact ship to be replaced. You can, however, in certain circumstances, lose your cargo, which can be a big loss if you purchased something expensive. Note that you can fly back to the site of the crash to recover your cargo, unless you crashed in the water or in an inaccessible location. The biggest payouts come from delivering cargo at a base that has a critical need for it. Early in the game, when money is tight, you can scroll through the available locations in the map to find the routes where you can buy inexpensive cargo and deliver it somewhere that would pay a huge amount of credits for it. Buying less expensive cargo means that if you do lose or damage the cargo, it limits your losses, but it doesn't necessarily have to limit your profits. For example, at the time of making this video, I found that you can buy food for 500 credits and sell it at Hardmine for 37,000. And there are quite a few examples of this where you can find cargo that's not going to be that expensive, but that's going to lead to some pretty significant profits for you if you can find the right locations to offload them at. So these are my 10 tips to get you started in Frontier Pilot Simulator. If you have any useful tips, feel free to share in the comments below. And as always, if you like this content, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next video.